Hello everybody, this is Sam Wolf coming at you with a deck tech today, so no cast today. Instead, we'll be doing a deck tech on the four color Echo Mokdo Revenge deck. I've been playing this deck for a few weeks now, and I took it to Masters last season on the ladder. And I think overall it's a really fun deck to play. I don't know if I would recommend ever using it to grind. Uh, unless, like, if you're trying to climb, this is really not the deck to play. But it is an absolute blast to play when you get to do your thing. Uh, I really don't think that there is a more fun deck in the game. So we'll just go over some quick synergies and kind of how the deck works. So the deck revolves around this card, Elysian Pathfinder. So Elysian Pathfinder gives the top unit of your deck Echo. And every unit in this deck outside of the Pathfinder has um, Revenge. So the cute thing about Revenge and Echo is when the unit dies and you trigger Destiny, uh, the Destiny will trigger on... The, the Echo will trigger and then the Destiny will trigger. So you'll get to play both creatures for free, and then you'll get to draw two cards. So what's cute about this is, for instance, Mokdo, you can, in theory, make infinite Mokdos because you'll echo a Mokdo, and you'll cast two Mokdos, they'll die, and when you draw them again, you'll have four Mokdos. And then when you draw those again, you'll have eight Mokdos. So they double each time you draw all of them, and the more you get, the better likely chance the that you you have to draw them and then they kind of go off by themselves so that's kind of fun the other thing that you get to do is stone powder alchemist and stone powder alchemist is kind of cute because he does two damage when you come in and i have won many games off the back of just dealing a ton of damage to people via the the summon triggers and echoing them and destinying them. Because if you get to cast two of them off of the first echo trigger, that's four damage. When they come back, that's eight damage. And that's not including if they get to attack or anything like that. And it definitely helps in the aggress against the aggressive decks. This deck has a lot of problems dealing with things that come down before turn five. So against some of the red decks, this, this card kind of helps stabilize you in that regard. The last creature in the deck is actually Piercing Grief. While it's kind of the worst creature to get echo it's i have definitely won maybe five percent of my games off of just beating people down with a piercing grief or surprising them with you know the the echo piercing grief for six damage and it's also very good at taking out weapons because you know they'll they'll kill your guy and attack you and then you get to charge and kill the weapon so there's that so some of the other cute things that you get to do with this is Rise to the Challenge. What you can do is you cast Elysian Pathfinder, give a thing Echo, and you cast Rise to the Challenge, and Rise to the Challenge can go ahead and get that Echo unit immediately. So the cute thing about that is Piercing Grief, let's say that that's the worst unit that, that can get Echo, and if you Rise to the Challenge it, you actually have 5-1 Piercing Griefs. So if you cast both of them, you get to attack for 10, and then when they Echo, you get to attack for 20. Uh, once you get both of them back. So that's kind of a cute thing that you can do with, with Rise of the Challenge. Uh, generally speaking, Rise of the Challenge is getting the Echo creature that Elysian Pathfinder gave Echo, or it is getting Elysian Pathfinder to give something Echo, because this deck really doesn't do anything without the Pathfinder. Uh, another way that we have to get the Pathfinder is the Scheme. So Scheme is just there to help us find the Pathfinder and sense... When something gets revenge, it goes into the top 10. You have a really good chance of finding that card off a scheme. And since you draw it, you do get any of the draw triggers that would happen, whether it be Destiny or Echo. Uh, the other thing that you can do is Dark Return. So Dark Return, if you Dark Return an Echo Destiny creature, you'll automatically get to cast it and draw a card. So if it's Echoed, you'll get to draw two cards. If it's not Echoed, you'll still get to draw a card, assuming that it had Destiny at some point. So it gives you a way to cycle away your Dark Returns. The other really interesting card in this deck is Devour. So one of the problems that this deck runs into a lot is silences. If you silence, if you get your Mokdo silenced, it's just a disaster. So oftentimes against those decks, you can wait till turn 7, cast Mokdo, 
and then when they go ahead and try to silence your guy, you can devour your mock though. Uh, just the, uh, some of the other cards real quick in the deck. Banish. Banish was originally actually a Suffocate, but I went ahead and cut those Suffocates in favor of Banish so that I can deal with Xenon, um, the Xenon deck because Xenon Obelisk is a problem and potentially the Interrogator also a problem. So Banish kind of helps deal with all that. And Slay for removal, and Harsh Rule for removal, Quarry, just to f help us find our stuff. And that's that's really all the deck does. Um, we're going to go ahead and play a few games, and I'll go ahead and talk through it, and see if I can help explain some things that are going on, and some of the interesting mechanics and interaction. So uh, why don't you go ahead and tune into the games. But for now, this is Ham Wolf, signing off.